It's Frightening Freaks on Display as we look at Dr. Fetter's family of freaks. This collected collection of created creatures comes to us from Clive Barker's The Infernal Parade, Series 1. By the way, I just want to apologize in advance for the term freaks. I acknowledge and am willing to accept the fact that freaks is not a term we really want to use nowadays. But for the sake of the titling of this packaging, I will continue to say freaks, noting freaks is a no-no word. We shouldn't be saying freaks. That being said, let's find out how big Dr. Fetter's family of freaks is. I'm so sorry. I know we shouldn't be using freaks. The family of freaks stand, uh, let's see here, 7.5 inches in height, and in centimeters you're looking at 19.1. And of course, what kind of reviewer would I be if I didn't show you guys the way that they all hook together? I would be a crappy reviewer. So we're not going to be a crappy reviewer. Let's, uh, let's bring in some of the ones that we've already had a look at. Now, the thing is, though, about the direction of some of these leads me to believe that there's a certain order for them. Like, say, for example, if you want to take, let's take this one right here. And uh, blasted wheels have popped off yet again. Just, I keep telling myself, this is the last time I'm going to have to do these for the reviews. The wheels are just an absolute nightmare. I'm going to go ahead and just get these tires on. Hold on one second. Yes. As I was saying, I'm glad this is the last time, knock on wood, that I'm going to have to ever put these blasted tires on them. They're going to stay on, and I'm going to leave them alone, and hopefully I'm never going to have to deal with them again. I f was saying, though, that I don't think that there's an, a particular order in which that these have to go. Although I do find that Tom Requiem sort of throws off everything because I feel as if the hitch should have been at the front. But still, you can get yourself any sort of combination of ones put together. So... Uh, I'm going to take Tom Requiem, say, for the front, and then I'm going to put Bleb and Healer next. And again, they just sort of hook on, hook in place. I'm just ignoring the fact that Requiem's tire just popped off. And let's reach off camera, and we're going to grab, say, Mary Slaughter. And this is, again, one instance where you may feel like you have to alternate these. So let's grab, we need one that has a hitch. Well, okay, you know what? We'll just use the Family of Freaks for the time being. Those will go on like so. And let's see how many times we have tires popping off here. There we go. Um, the one thing, too, is that the hitches aren't long enough, so you can't actually bend these. It's sort of just like one straight, straight away that you're going to have to have all of these. And then let's say for... What else could we put in there? Let's grab, he's actually way down here. Now this is, this is again one of the problems that the hitches, not only are they not long enough, but some of them I find are facing the wrong way. These all go this way, this way facing forward, but when you have say the likes of Bethany Bled, or Mary Slaughter, or the Golem, all the hitches are now, all the hitches are facing this way. So you would have to find a proper order in which you can get them all essentially facing this way so that some aren't facing backwards, not some facing forward. Realizing quickly that I would not have enough space to have one straight line of these instead of just kind of brought all the Infernal Parade characters into place here. Again, I feel as if, if anything, and I'm just going to grab... Uh, the golem here, I feel like these hitches needed to be this long um, so that you could have actually spiraled 
um, this train cavalcade of creatures, the hitches are way too short. And then ultimately it just means that you're gonna have to have one straight line of them. But they're for the, pro the purpose of showing you all of them, here are all the Infernal Parade characters. I mean, I, again, I really like these, but I gotta say though, putting them together was an absolute nightmare. My personal favorite, even though we technically haven't even looked at Dr. Fetter's Family of Freaks yet, I think my favorite, one of my favorites might be Bleb and, and Healer. And I really also like Mary Slaughter. I like the, I look, the look of having things impaled in her and she's sort of being suspended like that. But as you can see, and as I've mentioned in the previous review, all of them are very unique to one another. There's not a single one here that looks the same as the other. Perhaps the Tortured Souls line was sort of more closer to caring and borrowing of ideas. In the case, though, here of the Infernal Parade, you're something very different here. Each one of these are very different, and each appealing in their own little way. To say, though, that these figures have been a test of my time and patience is an understatement. But we're not gonna talk a little bit, we're not talking anymore about the assembly of putting these together because I feel as if I've beaten a dead horse. I'm not gonna mention again that I was frustrated to put these blasted wheels together. Nope, not gonna do it. Not gonna do it, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna touch base on it. What I am gonna touch base on though is a nice finale to the Infernal Parade reviews that we've been looking at on this channel. Here we have Dr. Fetter's family of freaks. So in theory, you're getting not one, not two, but three different individual figures. Although this one right here is not so much a figure as it is just a head. Standing atop of this really neat looking uh, a cart again, which is really that not that much different from the ones that we've looked at before. You've got the markers on both sides indicating exactly what they are. And uh, I do like that. The assembly, and I'll touch very, very quickly on it. The assembly really only involved putting the wheels on. Not gonna talk about that. Nope, not gonna do it. Putting the table on, then putting this on top, plugging that in place, putting the pedestal down, and then putting this on top. And then lastly, the largest of the canisters on top of that. So you're really only plugging in three things, and then you're putting two things on top of that. What you're really getting though is a neat looking setup. Gruesome, yes, I will say. Very admittingly, I would say it's gruesome, but it's a neat looking setup. Each one of these canisters is filled with a unknown liquid. I would be willing to guess water, but it could also be something else in there so that it just doesn't develop like a, a gross slime on the inside. I would advise that if you ever opened one of these, do not drink it. I know that kind of goes without saying, but as a reviewer, I feel the responsibility to tell you guys do not drink anything that you see inside of an old figure toy on a toy line, which I think was dated from 2004. So it's about 14 years ago that these figures came out. These would be like the furthest end of the scale of calling them figures, even though really anyone could debate the fact that McFarlane toys aren't really classed as figures to start off with. But these are really the furthest from that, the lowest on the totem when it comes to figures, because there's really nothing to them. There's nothing you can pose to them. There's nothing you can move it. You can't really even open these. So you really just sort of have a relegated display more than anything else. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off and we'll look at these individually. You can see how it attaches underneath there. There's this, the opening hole, and then that just plugs into the top there. Here we have a head. It kind of looks like it's part cow, part humanoid. It looks like, I believe it's Yak Face. I'm 100% certain Yak Face from Star Wars, just in a slightly different shade. You get one half of it, and I'm willing to guess if this is symmetrical, that this animal would have had three eyes. As you can see, there's an eye in the middle and there's an eye on the side. You can't see this eye, however, because you got a half sliced, um, you know, internal workings of what the creature would look like. So his head would be cleanly taken right off. Uh, it's a nice opportunity though, to see kind of how the animal would have looked if it was living, moving around freely, going about its day. But instead of what we're looking at is just its human uh, just its decapitated uh, head here. The liquid uh, doesn't go obviously all the way. It goes only about two thirds of the way up. It sort of moves like it's not water, almost as if it could have been like oil, like a baby oil, because baby oil is a little bit more dense. 
Um, it does also have a cap that takes that falls off. I wanted to remove it myself, but it popped off inadvertently. But this comes off, but there's a stopper on the inside, so that liquid ain't going anywhere. Whoosh. You would hate to get this immediately out of packaging and not be aware that this comes off and then it falls off and you immediately dash for wherever this fell. Still, that being said, I would be careful not to drop this because there's a seam line right around here in which the two halves have been put together. Clearly, if you drop this on a hard surface, there's that potential that that could crack and whatever the liquid insides would be would go everywhere and people would be upset that you've damaged their carpets, their floors, whatever. But there you have the head. Again, it kind of looks like yak face. Very gruesome. And uh, we can go ahead and put that back right on there. Just like that. Moving along is this little small chap. I don't even know what's happening here. I get that there's more than one thing that has been spliced together because as you can see, there is one head on that side. And then there's another similar head on this side. And they're not quite sharing one eye, but instead one dominant eye here and a smaller eye kind of making up the same rental space. What's happening though is this weird amalgamation though, where you've got the legs of one of the creatures kind of growing their way up in the opening, the groin area of the creature. And then the legs are kind of leaning up and pressing themselves against the tummy. I'm assuming this is all one, you know, one human or some human hybrid and again they probably tried to splice two things together to give us this the liquid is much more drained in this instance i don't know if it would continue to dehydrate i don't know if eventually you would see this down the road and there would be absolutely no liquid nor would i think that maybe at some point there could have been more liquid and it simply has just kind of dried out over the course of time but uh, as it goes there's very little liquid in there slightly more discolored a little bit more on a murkier coloring but it seems to have a little bit of a thicker density to it than that of water so i would lead to believe that it's it's not water inside but instead probably like a like a like an oil like a baby or mineral oil i guess uh two pegs two holes i should say on the underside and there's the plug stopper make sure you don't remove that oh man that's gonna go everywhere and Mom and dad probably aren't going to be very happy with you. This one's a little trickier to get in place because you have to line the holes up exactly uh, to the pegs for that to sit in place. And then lastly, we've got this one right here. Oh, stay, stay tires, don't pop off on me, please, whatever you do. This is sort of like a larger version of the one that we just looked at. Here, though, however, it looks like there's two distinct life forms. And I can't tell whether they've been trying to separate them or whether they were actually grown this way. But uh, definitely distorted, definitely an abomination of a creature. Um, this one is not, it's, it's not loose, but you can see where it's been pegged underneath. Um, the real stinkeroo, though, is if this game detached from the peg, you definitely wouldn't want to be shaking it, but if it came loose, you would just have this thing rattling around on the inside. There really wouldn't be anything stopping it. Speaking of stopping, you've got a little stopper on the underside. Don't touch it. No, 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 you want to. Don't, no, 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 don't touch it, don't touch it. And then there's a little hole right there, which again, that pegs into place. This one has a lid, the lid isn't removable. Probably a good thing. This lid also isn't removable, probably a good thing. So really the only thing that actually has a removable part is this one right here. Would you call that a decanter? Or is that more so just for wine? I, I don't know. I don't think when it comes to making freaks, we're gonna get all that technical with the, the canisters in which that are holding the freaks. Again, I just wanna stress again, saying freaks is not a good word to be using. You don't wanna be using freaks in your everyday conversations. Unless you're dealing with somebody who is legitimately a lab-grown freak, like if they're you know, part squid and no, even, even then, no. Even then, you, you don't want to be calling them a freak. Who knew that reviewing the Clive Barker Infernal Parade figures would be as much of a nightmare as the creatures themselves? Putting these things together... I don't know. I, I don't think I'd want to do that ever again. But I do it for you guys, the viewers, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. This is a line that I've wanted to cover for a very long time. In fact, 
I wanted to have a look at this line about two years ago and for one reason or another I just never got around to it. It probably worked itself out better that it didn't end up happening because now with a better lighting and better camera we hopefully or hopefully I've been able to present these a little bit better than I might have been able to do say two years ago. These are fun looking figures and by fun I mean in their grotesque, grotesque mutated states these have still been fun figures to have a look at and I know I've said that probably at nausea but despite for the fact that putting these together have just been a real pain in the butt I've enjoyed this toy line a little bit more than I think I've enjoyed some of the other lines. Um, comparing these say to the Tortured Souls for example I found a lot of consistencies with the Tortured Soul figures. Figure to figure after a while they sort of just felt like they were all the, so the same sort of designs. Here on the other hand with the Infernal Parade Every single figure that I've looked at in this in this lineup, if you will, have all felt very different from one another. Speaking of different, the in the Dr. Fetter's family of freaks, what I do like about this setup is that they're all very different from one another. You know, while while I'm talking and you guys are listening, I'm just looking over at the packaging for Dr. Fetter's family of freaks, and I can't help but notice that the liquid in the canisters were a little higher than what we're seeing right here. It does beg the question that maybe 10 years, if I was still doing this thing 10 years from now, could you imagine? I don't even know what YouTube would be 10 years from now. Probably be like virtual reality. You would probably watch it on your robot friend. I don't know. But 10 years from now, I wonder if this liquid would be completely evaporated from inside the canisters. Because looking at the packaging, the tallest of the three canisters looks completely full. Clearly, this isn't the case. We're looking at a half full canister. So I'm wondering if the liquid that they put inside is slowly evaporating. Begs the question. Maybe I'll leave this out and in 10 years time, I'll come back and have a look at it. I'll be walking over with my walker because I'm, I'm old after all. And I'll see if the canisters have any liquid left in them. And if YouTube is still happening, this isn't a, this isn't a guarantee. If it's still happening 10 years from now, we'll go back and have a look at these. The, the thing is nobody's going to remember. I could say I could say that and nobody's going to remember this. Nobody's going to say 10 years from now, hey, wait a minute. You told us that you were going to have a look at these canisters. You're a total fipper face. And I'll be flying away on my jetpack. You guys will never see me again. Jetpack. Either way, today's spooktacular review, we were having a look at the final figure from Clive Barker slash McFarlane Toys, the Infernal Parade. Again, they class this as series one. As far as I know, there was never a Series 2, so I guess the line didn't do well, or maybe Clive Barker or McFarlane Toys moved on to bigger and better things. Although I think this is as good as it gets, this is one of the better lines of the horror lineups that McFarlane Toys has done, in my honest opinion. Either way, even though some sad news that we're finally wrapping up this, these series of videos, I'm not sad the fact that I don't have to put any more of these stupid tires on. Oh hate those things but don't worry if you're sad that this is the end of spooky spots no way man no way there's still a whole lot happening for the rest of this month of spottober i know about it you don't know about it but i assure you that there's going to be a whole lot more coming your way so stay tuned for that make sure you as well you hit that little subscribe button down below bunkos because that will mean that when new videos are coming to this channel you'll never miss out and while you're at it Look at me asking you guys for all these things. While you're at it, why not swing over to the homepage and check out the videos section. See if there's anything that you may have missed along the way. Thanks for watching as you always do, guys. I'll see you in 10 years. Jetpack time. Whoosh.